team i hope you're all well um i don't know if this video it'll probably go up before my large haul so this is gonna look ridiculous um but it is currently saturday just to give you some context saturday the 26th of february i filmed my large haul like a week and a half ago and i edited it during this week um i filmed it it was a week and a few days ago because it was the day after my grandpa's funeral but uh, I just got home from staying at the boys last night and all of this was waiting for me. So I thought why not do an extra large uh, unboxing because this is from a Luma Crate. There's another one here from a Luma Crate. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I have my Fairy Loot box. I have some orders from Amazon and then there is a box from Waterstones as well. So I thought we'd dive in and find out what's going on. Let's open these from Amazon first and we'll also open the Fairy Loot, uh, sorry, the Waterstones one and then go into the subscription boxes. I think these are a combination of me getting myself stuff and also um, some gifts, possibly. Was this a gift or did I purchase it myself? I purchased it myself. Okay, cool. So this has just come out. It came out on Friday, I think, which makes sense. Um, and it is The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. And I know I'm fairly certain that Cassidy's just read this one and really, really enjoyed it. So I had my eye on it after seeing Cassidy going on about it being one of her most anticipated of the year. And it sounds really, really good. It is a fantasy. It's all political and all of that good stuff. So. From a major new voice in epic fantasy, the Justice of Kings introduces Sir Conrad Von Volt, an Emperor's Justice who is a detective, judge and executioner all in one. But these are dangerous times to be a justice. Ooh, this sounds a little bit like Dread, which I am here for because I love Dread. The empire of the wolf simmers with unrest. Rebels, he heretics and powerful patricans all challenge the might of the Imperial throne. Only the order of justices stands in the way of chaos. Sir Conrad von Vault is the most feared justice of all, upholding the law by way of his sharp mind, arcane powers and skills as a swordsman. At his side stands Helena Sedanka, his talented protege, orphaned by the wars that forged the empire. When the pair investigates the murder of, of a provincial aristocrat, they unearth a conspiracy which stretches to the very top of the imperial society. As the stakes rise and become even more personal, Von Volt and Helena must make a choice. Will they abandon the laws they've sworn to uphold in order to protect the empire? Um, this sounds so freaking good. Also, blurbed by Sebastian de Castel. That's the second book in a couple of weeks that I've been gift well, that I've gotten that's been blurred by Seb. So that's amazing. I am so here for that. Um, outstanding born in north yorkshire as well that sounds so up my street i love dread i love the original with sylvester stallone and i love the new one with carl urban but it sounds just like the new one where he's got a pro protege with him so i am so here for that one thank you to myself for gifting me that one this is freaking massive and i can't remember what's in it this could be stuff for the shop oh no <gasps> it's not stuff for the shop is this cc It's Cece. <laughs> Thank you for being a doll, love you, and because congrats from Cece. <laughs> Cece, I love you more. I really, really do. Um, okay. There's two in here, and this one is very heavy. What have we got? Ooh. Oh, she's adding to my collection. She sent me ghostly tales. I'm fairly certain that Cece's the one that um, wrapped up Jade's collection of these as well. These are collections of anthologies and there's so many different types. I got myself the Celtic ones and I think I got, um, I was just sent the Winter Tales ones and I also have the Nordic Tales one and now this is the Ghostly Tales one. So um, I'm excited about that. Thank you Cece for that one, so, so pretty. And then we also have, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm not eating yet today. Um, oh, Greek myths. Okay, this is by Jean Menzies. Um, Jean has a YouTube channel. I will leave a link to Jean's channel down below because I, off the top of my head, my apologies, Jean. I don't know her channel off the top of my head. But I've been wanting to. I've been. Have, I've had my eye on this for such a long time now since she published it, which I think was oh, maybe a hot minute ago or maybe last year. 
2020 so a couple of years ago now and i have had my eye on it but i've never really been into greek mythology however i feel like this could be a perfect way for me to get into it it's all done in very like you know in such a way that it really explains it very nicely and i love picture books like this you know like i don't particularly like books that are explaining things to you and they're just words after words after words i love it when there's graphs or pictures or whatever illustrations you know so i feel like i'm gonna learn so much from this and it might open my eyes a little bit more and then it might open my reading a little bit more into more greek mythology re like books retellings and stuff because i found myself dnf in two hades and persephone books now <laughs> and i'm really sad about it so um and i think it's possibly because i don't know the original story at all so I was hoping that this would help me along. So thank you so much, Cece, for both of these. You are an angel. Um, two very gorgeous books to add back to my collection. And then this one is also very heavy. Cece, this better not be you again, ma'am. No, it's not. It's for it's for <laughs> it's for Daisy and B. Um, it's me. Labels for Daisy and B. <laughs> That's work stuff. I knew there was probably something in there somewhere. Um, okay, so. Let's see what's come from Waterstones. This is a pre-order, so I can't remember what it is. Oh, I remember now. So, this, I'm fairly certain if I remember correctly. Or maybe I've got it wrong, which one this one is. Oh, no, it is. Okay. okay, so this is At the End of Everything by Marike Nishkamp. I will look into how you pronounce uh, that name correctly. My apologies. Um, but this, I can't even remember where I got the recommendation from for this. It was probably like Kayla from Books and Lala or Haley from Haley and Bookland. I think, if that's wrong, my apologies. Uh, and if it was you, let me know. Um, but it sounds really, really good. This is following um, a juvenile detention center, juvenile treatment center, it says. Um, they've been left to die, can they figure out how to live? Okay, the Hope Juvenile Treatment Center is ironically named. No one has no hope for the delinquent teenagers who have been exiled there. The world barely acknowledges they exist. Then the guards at Hope start acting strange and one day they don't show up. But when the teens band together to make a break from the facility, they encounter soldiers outside the gates. There's a rapidly spreading infectious disease outside and no one can leave their houses or travel without permit, which means the group is stuck at Hope. And this time, no one is watching out for them at all. As supplies quickly dwindle and the deadly plague tears, th tears through their ranks the group has decided whom among them they can trust and figure out how they can survive in a world that has never wanted them in the first place it sounds super interesting despite the fact that it is very close to home considering we've been going through a freaking pandemic the last few months anyway but it looks like there's mixed media in here as well a phone call between characters uh, kitchen inventory list Things like that. So I'm really fascinated by this one. And again, can't for the life of me remember who it was that brought my attention to this one. But it's obviously just come out. So thank you to me for getting that one. Then I have this small box from Illumicrate. No idea what's in it. Not a scooby-doo. Unless it's time for the after dark box again. Sorry, after light box. After dark? Oopsie. Oh, it is time for the after light box. This is the after light box. Um, so... Afterlight is a um, adult romance quarterly book club from, this smells delicious, from <laughs> um, Illumicrate. I don't know why I struggled so hard with that. So this is why it smells delicious. Luna and Wild. What is it? It's a little pouch to start off with. Oh, oh, there's a stone. Crystal? Oh, we got a crystal. Very nice. Oh, it looks like a little tarot card. Oh, the company is Lunar and Wild. So there's this little tarot card that says, I am worthy of love. Nice. And then in here we have rose and pink pepper, hand poured wax melt made with coconut and rapeseed wax and a blend of 100% essential oils. I think it's in the shape of a moon, but this is so pretty and there is also a scroll in here as well i'm not sure what's in the scroll i don't know whether i want to open it or not it looks really really nice um oh it gives you some little oh it tells you about your ro your crystal which is a rose quartz um and some other little bits and a ritual that you can do 
really cute very nice little pack going on there just chuck that in there i'll sort it out later very nice indeed that's adorable it smells so good um and then we have a tote bag which says though my soul may set in darkness it will rise in perfect light i have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night sarah williams um i'm unsure what book this is from so let's do a tote bag oh it doesn't say specifically what book it's inspired by if any but very pretty and then we have the book itself which is a hardback i've had my eye on this book uh, and i was going to pre-order it until i realized that it was probably coming in one of these boxes um so it's delilah green doesn't care by ashley herring blake and i'm so keen on this these are beautiful sprayed edges the original cover for this one i'm fairly certain is pink um but it's really pretty and inside it says here to ha here's to happily ever after for all kinds of love from ashley which is so nice uh and there is also a dear reader letter as well in there from ashley too and this one says delilah green swore she would never go back to bright falls nothing in nothing is there for her but memories of lonely childhood her life now is in new york with her photography career finally gaining steam and her bed never empty sure it's a different woman every night but that's just fine with her when delilah's estranged stepsister pressures her into photographing her wedding delilah finds herself back in bright falls once more she plans to breeze in and out but then she sees claire sutherland her stepsister's stuck up bestie and decides that maybe there's some fun and a little retribution to be had after all as a busy single mother claire depends upon life without surprises and delilah green is an unwelcome surprise at first but when they're forced together during the many wedding preparations, Claire isn't sure she has the strength to resist Delilah's charms. Even worse, she's starting to think she doesn't want to. Very nice indeed. Very pretty. So excited. So it is sapphic and I'm here for it. Lovely. Great job. Okay, so that's one box from Illumicrate done. So let's stick with some consistency with Illumicrate. I assume that this will be for February's box. Yes. And I do have a discount code for you if you would like to get some discount with Illumicrate. I will leave the code on the screen just here now. And also leave a link to Illumicrate in the description box down below if you wanna go and check them out along with my code. Illumicrate are a science fiction and fantasy book subscription service that sends you a box every single month with a YA slash adult um sci-fi or fantasy book uh, and they do such a good collection of things as well and i really really love them so this is a bad blood for the month of february i'm just going to leave that open in case i need to check anything because that's the spoiler card chuck that over there okay so what is this okay it's butterfly dust bath bomb sweet orange fragrance very nice indeed and this has come from little heart gifts and it says inspired by the poison yelena is given by valek in poison study i don't know what poison study is i haven't heard of it so i don't know not sure uh then we have this box that says medusa on it i assume it says medusa on it anyway medusa shield trinket tray oh that's very pretty How pretty is that very nice this is done by rachel ross uh, protect, protect your trinkets with this dish very pretty indeed love that and we have a relatively large white box <gasps> oh it's a tumbler i love me a tumbler i use these all the time so this is lacelle station i think proudly independent and it is inspired by a memory called empire i haven't read that one either but it's done by forensics and flowers very pretty very nice tumbler i love a good tumbler um you can never have too many tumblers i don't think just chucking all my shit over the other side um, then we have this little pack and it says if longing is a madness then none of us are sane by Nina Varela. Oh, I assume this is inspired by um, Cryer's War slash Ironheart. Am I correct? Yes. 
success. I know one of them. Um, this is one of the books that's on my um, TBR for final book support group, <laughs> essentially, because uh, I've not read, I've read Cry as War, but I haven't read Ironheart yet. So there's that. And then we have a teeny tiny little pouch and in here we has oh some coins Alex and Henry from red right red white and royal blue very nice I did enjoy red red white and royal blue I wouldn't mind rereading it at some point to be honest um and then we have the book which is oh look at those edges very nice indeed. A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Um, very, very pretty cover. Your presence is required at once for urgent business. Please return to Candice with your harp upon receipt. <gasps> Look at those end papers. So beautiful. Is it the same on the other side? Yeah, same on the other side. But under the dust jacket, oh my goodness, look at that. Matching the um, thingy majig. Same on the back as well with this on the spine. So pretty. And it's signed inside by Rebecca as well. Uh, this says, Enchantments run deep on the magical isle of Cadence. The caprious spirits that live there find mirth in the lives of the humans who call the land home. But that mischief turns to malevolence as girls begin to go missing. Adira, heiress of the East, knows the spirits only answer to a bard's music, enticing them to return the missing girls. But there's only one bard capable of drawing the spirits forth by song. Her childhood enemy, Jack Tamerlane. Tamerlane? He hasn't stepped foot on Cadence in ten long years, content to study music at the mainland university. But as Jack and Adira reluctantly work together, it becomes apparent that the troubles with the spirits is far more sinister than they first, than first thought, and older, darker secret lurks beneath the surface, threatening to undo them all. Ooh. An alluring and rich tale at once, fast-paced mystery and a love story as warm as a hearth. Ava Reed. Interesting. It sounds like it definitely sounds like it's got a whole mix of different um genres there for sure. Definitely a mystery involved, some romance, but then some fantasy as well. Very, very pretty indeed. Very, very nice, good looking book. Um, so yeah, if you would like to get some discount with Illumicro, you can use my code again. I will leave a link to them and my code in the description box down below. Please do go check them out, they're awesome. Um, so pop all of this back in here so that I know where everything is. And then finally we have Fairy Loot's box. So thank you to Fairy Loot for gifting me with this box. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and we have To the Moon and Back for this month's spoiler card. So this is a very pretty spoiler card as well. Um, so... I assume that that's not part of the box. It's just to uh, fill it out a little bit. <gasps> Ooh, first thing I see, a Crescent City pendant. Yes, please. Oh, that's really pretty. I hope the chain on it's quite long. Very nice indeed. Love me a Crescent City themed thingy-majigaby. Designed by Team Feralu as well. Very nice indeed. Good job, Team Feralu. Some socks. I love Feralu's trainer socks because for whatever reason, they never slip off my feet like normal trainer socks do. So good job. Um, these are Starless Sea inspired socks designed by... Jess Hawk. Sorry, the is covered up with the label. Um, very, very nice indeed. Love me some good socks. Never complain about some extra socks. Then we have a tote bag. Ooh, it's very colourful. It's the same on the other side as well. And this is Moon Goddess tote bag, designed by Rosie Thorne 88. Um, very, very pretty indeed. It's very colourful. Then we have some bookends. I'm so excited about these because I've been really needing some new bookends. These are Celestial bookends. Um, and... They feature the moon and the stars. They look like this. Very, very pretty. I know, I think our last ones were Lord of the Ring inspired. Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings inspired. If I remember correctly. 
Then we have a illustration card, which is from Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, which is a book that I have read. Again, Vicious Spirits is on my final book support group TBR, because I've not read it yet. And this month's collection of tarot cards are the Queen and King of Pentacles featuring Mustang and Darrow from the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown. So very nice indeed. And then the book. <laughs> Yay! Um, we have, can I get it all out in one go? Yes. We have the bookmark that matches the spoiler card as always. We have the fairy scoop, I'll go through that in a second. We have a dear reader letter. This is really, really pretty. Very pretty indeed. And then we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is very, very pretty. A retelling inspired by the mid-autumn legend. Um, we have Dark Edges, holy crap, sorry. <laughs> We have dark edges here and then down here, holy, you see my holy crap why that kicked in? Holy crap. Look at those end papers. Good lord. Oh, they're different on the other side. This is an incredibly pretty book. Or anything under the just check it. Oh, so pretty. Very nice. And it's signed as well by the author. So this one says, There are many legends about my mother. Raised on the moon, Zingian was unaware she was being hidden from the celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing the elixir of immortality. But when her magic flares and Xing Ying's existence is discovered, she is forced to flee her home, leaving her mother behind. Alone, powerless and afraid, Xing Ying makes her way to the Celestial Kingdom, a land of wonder and secrets. In disguise, she trains along the Emperor's son, mastering archery and magic despite the passion which flames between them. To rescue her mother, Xing Ying embarks on a quest, confronting legendary creatures and vicious enemies, but when forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, Xing Ying must challenge the ruthless emperor, leaving her torn between losing all she loves or plunging the realm into chaos. Inspired by the legend of uh, Changi, the moon goddess, this captivating debut weaves Chinese mythology into a sweeping adventure of love, family, immortals, and magic. It sounds wonderful. Um, I'm just hoping that the writing style will be up my street because it does look incredibly flowery. Fingers crossed, I we will see. But otherwise, absolutely beautiful book. Um, so pretty. Very, very nice indeed. And the Fairy Scoop has an interview with the author inside. Some recommendations of exciting 2022 March releases. And there is a read along going to be starting on March 21st for Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And March's theme is Threads of Fate. Um, if your life was predestined how far would you go to change it this box is dedicated to characters who fight against destiny and take control of their own fate you can expect items inspired by cersei the raven boys ray bearer and our feature book of the month we are thrilled to reveal that there will be a deck of foiled playing cards inspired by six crimson cranes daughter of the moon goddess jade fire gold and only a monster with artwork by uh naivu our feature book of the month is a retelling of classic Korean folklore, oh, folk tale of Shim Cheong. We are absolutely loving this enchanting and lyrical story, and we think you will too. The fairly exclusive ed edition will have an exclusive colour, two coloured stenciled edges, oh, two coloured stencil sprayed edges, artwork on the end papers, uh, foiled embossing on the hardcover, and signed by the author, and is as usual, will come with a letter from the author. We cannot wait for you to see this st stunning edition. As always, if you're already subscribed, it will just renew, don't panic. Um, but yeah, good job, Fairly. I love the bookends, I'm so excited about those. Um, they're all, always so bloody handy. But yeah, and I just think it's a very nice box. The books is, the book, the books. The book is really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, that's everything for this unboxing slash slight haul impromptu haul as well i'm constantly wearing this jumper now 
it's featured in most of my videos. I'm, I would make apologies, but I'm not going to because it's super comfy. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this very impromptu unboxing. And let me know in the comments down below if you got any of these. And I shall chat to you in the next video. Bye for now.